Hey guys, I'm Stephanie, and this is Steph Stove, and today I'm going to be making for you a great frosting. This frosting has been in my family for as long as I can remember. My mom made it all the time, my grandmother made it, and it's just been passed down through the generations. It is a wonderful homemade chocolate frosting. Some people call it icing because it's not as thick as normal buttercream frosting, but it is just delicious. Traditionally in the South, you would see it on a one of those enormous 10, 15, 20 layers if you wanted to get it wonderful chocolate cakes and it'd be at all kind of family gatherings, potlucks, dinner on the ground, and so forth. But today, I'm not making the cake part, I'm just making the icing so you can enjoy it with your family as well. Great to go on top of a sheet cake, cupcakes, or if you want to venture and make one of those gigantic tall cakes, we'll make that at another time. But this frosting is one that once you make it, maybe you want to call it icing, that's fine too. You'll never buy the stuff in the can again. This is amazing and so simple. So sit back as I share with you this wonderful chocolate icing recipe. It's been passed down from my family for many, many years. Let's go. Alrighty, to get this icing started, this icing is a cooked icing, or you may call it frosting, that's fine as well. Usually the difference between frosting is a little thicker than icing. So you may hear me say both things interchangeably and that's okay. So to get this started, I've got a medium um, pot here and I'm gonna go ahead and turn my eye on about um, six or medium heat. And to this, I'm going to add one stick of butter. Now, and again, and I've prefaced this before, sometimes I'll say butter, sometimes I use margarine on there. And that's okay, because in this I've used both, and if I ever use margarine, usually Imperial is one that I like, because it does very well in baking. So that's what I'm gonna be using today. So it's one stick of butter, margarine. And to this, we are going to add six teaspoons of Hershey's cocoa powder. I'm not going to try to get this exact. Three, four, five. Actually, I don't think that one came out. Five, six. And usually I'll heat these up. I'm not trying to be exact with the chocolate measurement because I do like. Um, a lot of the chocolate. All right, and now we got our butter that's starting to melt in here with our cocoa. And to this, I'm going to also add some evaporated milk. So I'm gonna shake this up just a little bit to be sure that it is well shaken. And I don't know if you do, but generally always wash off the tops of any kind of your metal cans. And then if you can see me, I'm just using a regular can opener here. And always when you're doing a metal can opener, even though you're only gonna need one hole to pour from, I always do two because it does make it much easier to pour. And to this, I'm gonna add five tablespoons of milk. Two, three, four, five. And yes, I do count them out when I do it. That's okay, you may not do that, but I find myself having to do that. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna melt this together, and it doesn't take too terribly long for this process um, to melt together, because obviously the only solid we have in here is our butter. But what we do want, we want this to come to a low, low boil to start with. And as it's coming together, I generally mash my butter. And you can use a whisk because you do want your chocolate to be well dissolved in there. And we're just going to mix this up. Ooh. Good milk chocolate flavor. I can already smell it. And boy, can I see my mom as a kid making this. Meaning when I was a kid, obviously not her as a kid, but I know my grandmother made it for her, my mom made it for me. I make this for my family all the time. And it's just so simple. Like I said, once you have it 
all other chocolate frosting icings just pale in comparison. It's just delicious. It's, again, just so simple to make. Just whisking, as you can see, all of our cocoa powder has dissolved, so I just do want to kind of whisk occasionally as this comes to a boil. Take very long. chocolatey color. You see we got some bubbles already forming so again it's only just a couple of minutes that we've that it will take. And again I'm not trying to make a rapid boil that's why I'm stirring in between because I do want a low boil. Sure your pan's large enough. Don't use too small of a pan where it'll boil over. Now, after it comes to a boil, I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to continue to whisk because you do not want this to burn on the bottom. I'll move it off a little bit off my eye. As you're whisking it, it's cooling down the, mi the mixture because it's adding air into it. So pretty chocolatey mix. Ooh, that's so pretty. And you can see it's already um, begin to thicken at this point too. So it's not super liquidy. Now it is liquidy, but it's not, it's not like water. All right, I'm just gonna whisk just a little bit more and move this over to the side. Just gonna continue now. I'm gonna move it completely off the eye. Move it over just a little bit so you can see a little bit better. I'll turn that. Move this up, give you a little better angle here. Hopefully you can see that. Now, um, after it is off the eye, I'm just gonna continue again, whisk it again, because I don't want those um, butter solids to separate. I want them to stay together. All right, and now at this point, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna add a teaspoon of vanilla. I'm gonna get my measuring spoons over here so I don't drip anything. So I'm gonna add a teaspoon of vanilla. And make sure when you're adding your vanilla or something like that, an extract, that you do it off the heat because you don't want that flavor to cook down and dissipate. You do want it kind of as your last thing that you're adding. All right, now I'm gonna move away from the stove for just a minute. We're gonna add one more ingredient and make this just even better. All right, I've given this just about three or four minutes to cool down. As you can see, it's coming together and I'll just mix it again. And it's got some thickness, but it is still a little loose. So I brought it over to my kitchen table just to have a little bit more workable space. My pot is somewhat warm, but it is not super hot at this point. So what we need to do to finish this is add some powdered sugar to it. So um, my mom's original recipe, as my grandmother's, it would always say to add a box of powdered sugar. Well, we don't get powdered sugar in boxes anymore. So you can measure this out, and generally I get powdered sugar and put it in a big container because I use a lot of it. Um, about three and a half cups will be equivalent to a box. And sometimes I go ahead and put four cups in. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll start with one. 
kind of help me here and mix it together. And I can remember my mom, when she did this, she'd always do it one at a time. Mix it together and you see it gets a little bit more substance. You can put it all in there, but I found that if you do it just a cup at a time, it's much better. So I got one. And I always like to put it all together. And this is so good. My husband just came in from work just a minute ago and he said, oh, I said, golly, so you make me so hungry. With that, I'm ready to eat it. So he'll get to eat it in just a few minutes when I get finished. So here's two, and you can see as you put it in, and again, I'm still using the whisk here, it will get a little thicker each time. But again, this is not a, a frosting icing. I use kind of the, again, the term interchangeably. Because I've heard some people call it icing, but I think of my mom's original recipe. She called it a frosting. See, we're getting a little thicker and I can feel a little bit more effort when I'm mixing it together. And so I'm gonna go, this is cup number three. So I've got three and we ended up doing four total. And again, each time, you know, we're adding all that extra sugar to it, the powdered sugar. And you can see now we're getting a lot more substance, a lot more thickness to it. And our color's changing a little bit. It's getting kind of more of a milk chocolate color. As before, it's a little richer color. Again, it takes a little bit more effort to mix it together. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and do four cups this time. Usually I kind of jump between three and a half and four, but for this sake of doing it, I'll just do the four cups. And I'm gonna just incorporate this a little, and you'll see why in just a minute. And again, we're getting more and more solid here. As you can see, each addition of our powdered sugar our mixture. Oh, look at that. God, makes you just want to jump in with a fork or a spoon. Let's do a big spoon. Forget a fork. We'd lose some of that icing on the fork. All right, let me get that off. I'm going to set this in my measuring cup because I'm finished with my powdered sugar at this point. Close it back up. And at this point, now I was going with my immersion blender and blend this really well. Again, I can remember my mom beating this by hand constantly. And if you have a hand mixer, you can do that. Because the main thing that I'm trying to do is put a little air into it, as well as to be sure that any of the powdered sugar that I added does come together. And that way, the last thing you want to do is eat a piece of cake with frosting and have a big old chunk of powdered sugar in there. My powdered sugar is good. You don't want a mouthful of it. That pretty. Uh, look at that. I'm gonna let it drip because I'm not gonna lose any of this. And you can even see here on the immersion blender, as it sits, it does firm up because now it's not quite as drippy as it was before. I'll use this and go through and scrape that off. Gosh, I can remember as a kid, my brother and I. Man, we would always, when Mama made something like this, we were like, please. We wanted to lick those beaters, and she let us. We never were the family that said, oh, don't do it. Nah, we were always gonna lick the beaters. And I still do. You may not at your house, but that's okay. I do. And this, look at that frosting. Mm. Yum, 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 yum. So here's our frosting. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Now, I've got a plain sheet cake, just old box Betty Crocker cake that we made earlier. And I'm gonna go ahead and cover this on top and we'll get a nice peek on what that wonderful, beautiful cake looks like with this amazing frosting. Just a minute.
All right, so right here I do have, as I told you before, this is just a regular sheet cake. Just, uh, I think this is 11 by nine, possibly. It's a pretty good size. And it's just a box cake mix. And a lot of times I always put this kind of frosting over a box cake to kind of elevate it. So if you're in a pinch, this is great. And as you can see, as our frosting sits, it does thicken just a little bit. So we are going to pour this over the cake. And I know my husband even says, well, he loves like a yellow cake or a butter recipe cake with this homemade chocolate frosting. Ooh, yummy. Look at that. Now you do want your cake completely cool because if it is not cool, it'll kind of run all the way down. And the good thing about doing it on a sheet cake like this, it just kind of puddles on the side. And this is probably one of the ways that my mom would make it most often when we were growing up, just cause it's so easy. And just some kind of good, and you can top it with pecans, walnuts, or just leave it plain. Isn't that pretty? I'm gonna be licking this in just a couple of minutes. So, let's cut this. Now, if you do let it sit just a little bit longer, the icing will get a little bit firmer. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut in because I want some of this good icing. I might go ahead and just cut it all the way down. It'll be easy because we'll probably be knocking this cake out pretty soon. I'm go ahead. And if you're traveling, doing a cake like this, travels really nicely as well. So let's scoop this out. Now the first piece usually does not come out the easiest, but look at that. Look at that cake right there. And as you can see, it's just kind of billows over to the sides. And that's traditionally what this icing will do. It just goes down everywhere. So, I will say, I'm Stephanie and this has been Steph's Day. For today, we made an icing that is just one that I grew up. This homemade chocolate icing. So good. Mmm. This is some kind of good. Mm. Takes me back to my childhood always as well. And if you like milk, this is probably a two glass of milk kind of cake because it is just super sweet and it's super, super good. So enjoy this chocolate frosting with your family as well. Mm. Delish. Give us a thumbs up, click that subscribe button for more great content like this. And remember, Steph's Day, where we're making memories one dish at a time. Enjoy this recipe. Here's my mom's original card that she gave me. I've had it for 30 years of this chocolate frosting that is just delicious. I do hope you enjoy it with your family as well. Thanks for watching. Have a great night. Bye.